If you've ever had the fantasy of soaring over bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic in a flying vehicle, that may be possible sooner than you think. Not with a flying car, but with a battery-powered aircraft called an eVTOL, a clunky acronym for Electric Vertical Takeoff and Landing Vehicle. Dozens of companies are spending billions of dollars to make eVTOLs that will operate like air taxis, taking off and landing from what are called vertiports on the tops of buildings, parking garages, or helipads in congested cities. eVTOLs promise a faster, safer, and greener mode of transportation, potentially changing the way we work and live. Sound too good to be true? We went for a joyride to find out. The story will continue in a moment. I will arm the aircraft if you are ready. Yeah, totally. Confirm clear above. If this looks like an oversized drone I'm about to take off in, that's pretty much what it is. Breaking ground right there. It's a single-seat eVTOL called Hexa, powered by 18 propellers, each with its own battery. No jet fuel required. You are in control. Onboard computers automatically adjust for altitude and wind. You really feel the wind up here. So all I had to do was use a joystick to control Hexa's movement and speed. It took about 30 minutes of pre-flight training to get the hang of it. Use that yaw to rotate 90 degrees. Wonderful. Hexa is still in its testing phase. So I had to stay close to Chief Pilot Jace McCown and his ground crew. But they say it's flown up to 90 feet in the air and 45 miles per hour. Whenever you're ready, you can come back to home. The batteries last up to 15 minutes. I was going to try okay. to land over the camera. Yeah, absolutely. To land, I maneuvered Hexa into position, pressed a button, and the computers did the rest. Right there, you are on the ground, and the props are spinning down. That is cool. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Piece of cake, That right? is awesome. Is that fun? is so much fun. Yes. Wow. I, I so just want to, like, take off with it. I know. Matt Chasen is CEO wow. of Austin-based you know, Lyft down Aircraft, down which yeah, makes Hexa. He envisions a future yeah, sure, where it's I mean, used by totally commuters to skip air, rush hour traffic. You can fly 10 miles in 10 minutes instead of spending over an hour on the roads during rush hour congestion. Would it be something that an individual then in the future owns and flies from their house to somewhere? We don't see individual ownership as very practical. These are, these are very expensive aircraft. We see putting fleets of aircraft at locations where we provide maintenance, we provide training, and people can come in and basically pay per flight. But that's still a long way off. Federal, state, and local regulators, not to mention the nation's airspace, aren't ready for hundreds of thousands of commuters piloting their own EV tolls in the skies over congested cities. So to give people a taste of the future now, Chasen designed Hexa as an ultralight vehicle, which means it doesn't have to go through the Federal Aviation Administration's complex certification process, but also can't fly over populated areas. Chasen plans to start offering rides to paying customers for $250 by the end of this year. The initial market you see is essentially joy rides for people. Yeah, I think there's a huge market for people to just experience uh, the thrill and joy of flight. Around the world, all kinds of EV tolls are being developed. Cargo carriers, air ambulances, and a whole lot of air taxis. Some with a pilot, some without. The Air Force is investing, so is Airbus and American Airlines. Dozens of companies are already working with the FAA. It's not the flying cars that science fiction movies anticipated. No, but when you think about it, I, I look back over the arc of my own career, having been a pilot for 42 years, and I'm just amazed by the amount of innovation that has taken place. Billy Nolan was head of safety for the FAA before being named acting administrator last month. How difficult a certification process is there? Because there's a lot of moving parts to this. First, we have to certify the design of the, of the aircraft itself. And then we look at how it will operate. Is it piloted? Is it autonomous? We look at where it will operate. So that means how do we put it within our nation's airspace? So once it's met that safety threshold, and only until it's met that safety threshold, will we be, be prepared to certify it. Some eVTOL companies are well on their way. 
We flew in a gas-guzzling helicopter with one of the frontrunners in the air taxi arms race, Joe Ben Bevert, CEO of Joby Aviation. He took us to this remote facility in California where he's testing his eVTOL, the Joby aircraft. As we landed, it felt like the old guard meeting the new. Obviously, it's a combination of a helicopter and a plane. Exactly. So it can take off like a helicopter, but it flies with the efficiency of an airplane. Bevert has been working on the Joby for more than a decade. It has six propellers and four batteries in its wings and will operate as an air taxi, carrying a pilot and four passengers. He says it can fly 150 miles on a single charge and has a top speed of around 200 miles an hour. Why this design? So vertical takeoff is important so we can take you to where you want to go, right? We don't need a huge runway. And then with the wing, it gives you the efficiency to fly far and to fly fast. Pilot, you're cleared. Flight Black South will blow. Because it's still being tested, the Joby was piloted remotely by a nearby ground crew. Planets for flight. When they fired up the motors, unlike a helicopter, the Joby didn't need time to warm up. It took off in about 20 seconds. That's it? That's really quiet. We wanted this to sound more like the wind in the trees than the wop wop of a helicopter. Noise levels are a critical issue since eVTOLs are meant to take off and land near where people work and live. This is below the background noise level of many cities. You know, I go around with my decibel meter on my phone and, uh -huh. like, measure sound levels. <laughs> That's and, what you've and, been and, doing and, for 10 years? Exactly, because we needed to make sure that the aircraft was going to be quiet enough. Bevert studied mechanical engineering at Stanford, where he invented this popular flexible camera tripod and later created a company that made flying wind turbines. But the Joby had remained an elusive dream. There were definitely skeptics, uh -huh. uh, even, you know, good friends of mine who didn't believe that you could make this with batteries and electric propulsion. The battery technology just wasn't there, it wouldn't work. Yeah. Bevert hired John Wagner away from Tesla, where he helped develop the car's revolutionary batteries. At Joby, he figured out a way to make the batteries lighter, but still powerful enough to get the two-ton eVTOL off the ground. You had to play to the strengths of battery power and the strengths of electric motors. So a typical aircraft might have one big motor, but we can have six motors distributed throughout the aircraft and in that way operate in a much more efficient manner. The weight of everything must be the most important thing. Absolutely. So how do you make a plane as light as possible? You essentially have to engineer every piece of it. The outside of the Joby is made with layers of lightweight carbon fiber. The batteries, as well as computers, electronics, and motors are constructed under John Wagner's watch and his team shakes, bakes, and spins them to ensure they'll meet the FAA's rigorous safety standards. They have to certify the aircraft as being safe and capable of flying to their standards. They also have to certify the production of all the parts of it. Exactly, and the operation, the pilot training, the maintenance uh, steps, every facet is heavily regulated. All this costs a lot of money. Toyota has invested about $400 million in Joby, and Bevert took the company public last year. I think the texture is good. Billionaire Paul Shiara, co-founder of the website Pinterest, has also put in a small fortune. He's Joby's executive chairman and says they'll launch in up to three cities and that passengers will eventually end up paying around 3 to $4 a mile to fly, a little more than an average Uber ride. Can you just take me through, as a passenger, what it looks like? I want to get to JFK Airport. It's bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. What do I do? Take out your phone, pull out an app, and with one click, you're booking the whole trip. So a car is coming to wherever you are in Manhattan. It's taking you to the takeoff and landing location, the Vertiport. And you're hopping in your Joby, and it's flying you to your final destination. Now, maybe there's a car at the other end, or you're just walking to the tail end. If people are taking cars to and from Vertiports, doesn't that just add to congestion? If we're able to you know, take out 80% of the miles um, that people might be traveling and move those miles from congested roads to the air, I think that's gonna have an impact. But just a few weeks after we saw this Joby aircraft fly, it crashed in February due to what federal investigators called a component failure. No one was hurt, but the eVTOL was totaled. Bevert says that's all part of the testing process and is as optimistic now as he was when we interviewed him. How far are you from 
getting the first Joby in the sky with passengers. So we are launching our service in 2024. You think you can do it that quickly? Yes. There have been, though, a lot of companies that have said, oh, we're going to do this in two years, and then it doesn't happen. We're very confident. There's a lot of confidence over at Whisk Aero as well, though the VTOL they're developing will be even more complicated to bring to market because it's fully autonomous. There'll be passengers, but no pilot on board. You're not just figuring out an electric vehicle, you're figuring out a fully autonomous flying That's right. vehicle. That's right. We're going for it. <laughs> <laughs> you and I talked about that. Earlier. CEO Gary Geisen says they're on track to spend about $2 billion. The company is bankrolled by Boeing and Google co-founder Larry Page. They've been testing the technology for the last eight years. Control tap in position for liftoff. So how many test flights have you actually done? So close, close to 1,600 test flights without, you know, knock on wood, without an incident. Selecting liftoff now. We watched one of those test flights in Hollister, California. A team of engineers about half a mile away started the VTOL with the click of a mouse. The entire route was pre-programmed. Why autonomous? Yeah. Why go this route? So we're going straight to self-flying, uh, several reasons. One, it's safer. Safer, he says, because most plane accidents involve human error. Much of commercial aviation is already automated, and Geisen sees the entire eVTOL industry going that way eventually. He's determined to get there first. We do it primarily from a safety perspective, but also scale. So mm -hmm. if you don't have a pilot in the aircraft, it's less expensive. You don't have to do pilot training. Uh, you're flying four passengers. Um, we can charge less. We don't want this to be a premium helicopter-like service. We want this to be a service that's affordable to the masses. There is a hurdle psychologically for people to get into an aircraft that does not have a human at the control. Of course. And so what we're trying to do with that is each passenger can be in uh, verbal communication with the ground. They can be talking to a pilot whenever they want to. So it's all designed to provide comfort. It will take time. This isn't going to happen overnight. Geisen wants to launch WIST's four-seater air taxi service in the world's 20 busiest cities within the next decade. Wheels down. You don't give a date of when you think you'll be operational. Yeah, you know why we don't do that? Because we are not in control of that part. The FAA is, uh, in Europe it's called EASA, they're in charge. So when they certify aircraft to fly, that's when you fly. The FAA won't say when an autonomous eVTOL might be certified, but acting administrator Billy Nolan told us hailing a piloted air taxi by 2024 is well within the realm of possibility. The challenge for us is to make sure that innovation doesn't come at the expense of safety. But clearly we are seeing the emergence of uh, something that's fantastic, I think. This is real. I mean, this is no longer just the stuff of fantasy. We want to be very careful. We want to be very measured. But you're absolutely right. This is real and this is happening. We've come a long way from where we were just, you know, a mere decade ago. It's really cool. <laughs> Taking flight with Anderson Cooper at 60minutesovertime.com. Sponsored by Cologuard.